What is the best move in Pokemon? If you ask the average fan, you'd probably expect an answer like Hydro Pump or Draco Meteor or Hyper Beam. But what if I told you one of the most important moves a competitive Pokemon often leaves the user knocked out and never does any damage? I'm talking about Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Let me follow me away a hit. Follow me allows a Pokemon to redirect all targeted moves opponents used that turn to itself. But some of you might be wondering, how is that any good? Isn't my opponent trying to hit my Pokemon anyway? Well, official competitive Pokemon, also called VGC, is played using the double battles format. So you can use follow me to protect one of your Pokemon at the expense of another one of your Pokemon. Today, let's take a look at the history of this extremely unique move, and see how it's been utilized since the very beginning of competitive play. The first recorded instances of Follow Me doing well in a tournament that I could find was in 2010. The first format that allowed powerful, restricted, legendary Pokemon, like Kyogre and Groudon. The most common Follow Me Pokemon was probably Smeargle. This guy's worth a whole video by himself, so just know that if Smeargle was legal, he was probably running around picking Follow Me along with every other Rooked support move you could think of. Third place at Worlds in 2010 was running a Follow Me Togekiss. Togekiss was a particularly powerful Follow Me user, because it has two immunities, Ghost and Ground, allowing it to redirect those type attacks completely for free. And it was immune to the devastating Ground type attacks from Groudon, who was everywhere. In 2010. In 2011, we were only allowed to use Unova Pokemon, and it turns out that literally zero Pokemon from that generation can learn Follow Me. But it's worth noting that in Generation 5, we got a new redirection move called Rage Powder. But Rage Powder cannot redirect attacks from Grass type Pokemon or from Pokemon immune to Powder moves, like those with Overcoat or those wearing a pair of safety goggles. So Follow Me was still a very unique move. In 2012, we saw a very different kind of follow-me user in Lucario. Ferris Akos had a top 8 performance at the 2012 Italian Nationals with an extremely unique Belly Drum Polyrath team. Belly Drum and Follow Me is a match made in heaven. Normally, Belly Drum is a pretty risky move because you take so much damage. But if you can guarantee your opponent will be hitting the other guy and not your setup Pokemon, suddenly things get really dangerous really fast. Also worth noting that besides Follow Me, this Lucario was aggressive, packing a Psychic Gem for a boosted Psychic, probably to take out a Moongus. That could be a big problem for such a Water-type centered strategy. In 2013, Sage and Park brought a Follow Me Magmar to the World Championship, going undefeated during the Swiss portion of the tournament and losing in top eight. Magmar was there to redirect attacks that would be super effective against Sajin's Jellicent, protecting it so we could get up its trick room. Magmar's ability made it a pretty interesting follow me user, because when Magmar used follow me, not only did you not get to hit the Pokemon you wanted to, but there was also a chance you would get burned thanks to Magmar's flame body. You might get punished just for attacking in the first place. Don't get used to seeing follow me Magmar, because Magmar was one of three Pokemon, along with Electabuzz and Mr. Mime, that were only able to learn follow me through the GameCube games, Pokemon Colosseum and Pokemon XD. And starting in 2014, moves you could only learn through transfers or events from other games were no longer legal for competitive play. 2014 is perhaps the most iconic year for Follow Me. But before we get into that, why don't you follow me and subscribe? Both finalists in 2014 used a Follow Me Pokemon. For Jody Azarelli, that Pokemon was a Mega Lucario. Jody's team was full of powerful Pokemon like Garchomp and Salamence. These two powerful Dragon types really, really didn't want to get hit by an Ice, Dragon, or Fairy type attack. But thanks to Lucario's Steel typing, it resisted those first two and only took neutral damage from Fairy types. And thanks to Mega Lucario's insanely powerful adaptability boosted Bullet Punches, sometimes it could just knock out the Fairy type instead of redirecting its attacks. A nice mix between defense and offense. But the eventual winner had the Pokemon I know a lot of you clicked on this video just to hear me talk about, Pachirisu. To keep a long story short, thanks to Pachirisu's ability Volt Absorb, it was basically impossible to click an Electric type attack while it was on the field. Because if they did, and they clicked Follow Me, you'd spend your turn healing your opponent's Pokemon. Something Sajin's team took great advantage of. Since his Mega Gyarados really didn't want to be taking Electric type attacks while it was trying to set up its Dragon Dance. And, thanks to smart EV investment, Pachirisu could even take powerful Draco Meteors on the chip. Jump will connect, will deal some good damage, but we've already seen not enough. After Pachirisu's big break, Follow Me really started to take off. In 2015, Follow Me users were everywhere, with Lucario, Clefable, Clefairy, and Togekiss all tough cutting in high level tournaments. Hold up, wait a minute. 
Something ain't right. Clefairy? Even factoring an Eviolite, Clefairy is less bulky than Clefable, so what gives? Well, Clefairy has a hidden ability, Friend Guard, which reduces the damage its partner Pokemon takes by 25%, and when it evolves, it loses the ability. Friend Guard plus Follow Me puts your opponent in a really bad spot. If they click Spread Moves to play around Follow Me, they probably won't knock your Pokemon out because of the Spread Reduction plus Friend Guard. If they try to take a half measure and attack one of the Clefairy and one of the partner, and Clefairy protects, they'll get basically nowhere with their turn. It's maddeningly frustrating and insanely powerful. For the next few years, the cast of Follow Me users we've come to know and love did their thing, redirecting moves to protect sweepers, trick room setters, and set up Pokemon, until we got a big mix-up in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Lucario lost Follow Me in the Great Move Purge. But don't worry, Game Freak was giving us a replacement, and a really strong one at that. Indeedy, F. Indeed, he looks pretty similar to what we expect out of Follow Me user. Kinda bulky, supportive move pool, but this thing was a huge deal thanks to its ability. Psychic Surge. Indeed, he sets Psychic Terrain when it comes onto the field, blocking priority moves and boosting the power of Psychic type attacks. Like we talked about with Clefairy, any Follow Me Pokemon that can cut off options beyond just redirection is nuts. But we're not done with Indeed. The Generation 8 Isle of Armor DLC introduced a new move, Expanding Force, which became an extremely powerful spread move when used in Psychic Terrain. And there was some insanely powerful Psychic types introduced in Generation 8, like Hatterene and Calyrex Shadow Rider. So this thing was a menace. Togekiss also saw a huge amount of play in the early formats of Generation 8, serving both as a follow me mon to protect Tyranitar and Excadrill from fighting in ground type attacks, and as a great option for a Dynamax target, because it had access to the insanely powerful Max Airstream. Finally, we get to Generation 9. There's so few Pokemon that learn Follow Me. There's no way they'd introduce another insanely powerful one so soon, right? Well, Mousehold introduced us to another Friend Guard Follow Me user. And while he's definitely a little less bulky than the typical Follow Me Pokemon, he makes up for it by being quite a bit speedier, making it an excellent user of offensive support moves like Super Fang and Encore. If you've played any Generation 9 VGC, you know how annoying this little mouse is with Annihilate. Annihilate's signature move, Rage Fist, increases in power every time it gets hit. And Mousehold has beat up, a move that hits multiple times, but does extremely little damage. So, if your opponent leads Mousehold Annihilate, you are in for a hell of a guessing game. Plus, since Annihilate is a ghost type, Mousehold loves redirecting any stray Shadow Balls that were thrown its way. For a lot of these same reasons, Mousehold has also seen a lot of success with another ghost type, Golden Go, usually a bulky set with nasty plot. So, that's the story so far. I find it insanely interesting that such a powerful move has been around since before VGC even started, and yet, it took a little while to become such a big part of the game. Are there any other moves that you think are worth taking a historic look at? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.